Okay, let me go ahead and make this video before I lose my lighting. Um, yeah, I just want to give an update. Um, I need to do a video, at least one. I should have done one for each trimester. I am in my second trimester. Thursday will make 22 weeks. I don't know if I can back up and you can kind of see my belly. This is not really a this is not really a shirt where you can see my stomach that well, but when I have on a tight fitting shirt, I'm busting out of everywhere. But yeah, um, I'm 22 weeks and it's crazy. Like I don't even know how to explain the joy and happiness and love that comes with being pregnant. The first trimester wasn't so easy <laughs> because of course the nausea. Um, you sleep a lot. That was a really good thing about the first trimester. I should have made a video during the first trimester to give you a more accurate depiction of it. Because right now I'm just like, oh yeah, it was all butterflies. And my first trimester was really hard. Um, it was really difficult because I'm so tiny. So um, it doesn't seem like a lot to other people. And one of the biggest pet peeves about being so small, I'm 5'2". Right now I'm 110 pounds, but when I first got pregnant I was 85. One of my, sorry, just all itching on camera. One of my biggest pet peeves to this day is um, people saying, or I tell people I gained 24 pounds since I've been pregnant. And they're like, where? And I'm like, don't, don't hate on me because I'm still small and you're fat and you're not even pregnant. So... Yeah, so I get so tired of people saying that. Like, that's one of the biggest annoyances for being small and being pregnant. And I'm sure other people have had to deal with it, too. It's just like, keep your opinions to yourself. Any opinions that you have about my body, about me, about my baby, about my pregnancy, keep to yourself. Like, and that's the biggest, biggest annoyance for me. It's like, I haven't had people touching. They don't want to take it that far. Like... I don't even say anything to the people who um who say stuff about my size and oh you're still so small and oh you're nothing but belly because if I were to start throwing out the F word about people being fat, calling me skinny, feelings would get hurt. <laughs> so it's better for me just to not say anything than to take it that far because I will call you fat. Pretty much. And I'll hurt your feelings and you'll never talk to me again. But that'll be a solution for me but I just don't want to go that far because the only people that are saying it are like my co-workers and I'm just trying not to stir the pot but one more person got one more gain because I'm going to throw out the F word and I'm going to start calling people fat and it's going to be a wrap then nobody's going to say anything about my size anymore but anyway aside from that your hormones go up and down and up and down and your emotions are just all over the place so feelings that I hadn't felt in years, I've had dreams about things that I thought I was over and past. Um, I had pretty good dreams. I've had maybe a few nightmares. People say when they're pregnant they have more nightmares. I usually don't ever have nightmares. I don't do scary movies. I don't do crazy stuff like that because I've had nightmares since I was a little girl. And it was really, really hard for me to shake when I was a teenager, so... I don't do scary stuff to be all up in my mind and my spirit when I'm trying to sleep. So I've had nightmares, but they haven't been like, oh my God, they've been just kind of crazy, crazy stuff. Um, so like I said, I'm 22 weeks in. I'm halfway through my pregnancy. Um, more than that, actually, I'm due, supposed to be due November 28th. Um, I've already had an ultrasound. It's a boy. At first, like, nobody really deals with the emotions that come with finding out the sex of your baby. Because um, at first I was like, what am I going to do with a boy? I don't even know. I can't even figure boys out. Da -da -da -da. And then the more time that passed, I'm just like, I don't even know what I would have done if it was a girl. <laughs> like, you really, really do. So for the women out there, nobody dealt with it with me about the, um... I don't 
don't like kids. And maybe I shouldn't say that because I'm pregnant. I'm gonna like my baby, but I don't like kids in general. Like, oh, they just get on my nerves. They're just everywhere. <laughs> anyway, um, they're outside screaming. Um, yeah, so nobody, nobody personally dealt with, um, with, with your reaction and your feelings after you find out the sex of your baby. Nobody dealt with that with me. So I, um, I had some mixed feelings after I found out the sex of my baby and I was like, what am I going to do? I don't even know what to do with the boy. And... And now it's like I read all these articles and write, I'm reading books and blogs about people with boys and I keep coming across nothing but women with boys and I'm just like I love this. It was like I can't I couldn't picture being a girl now. I'm so happy it's a boy. And I was reading a book the other day and it was just like this lady had all boys and she was just as happy as could be. But then you deal with people and their disappointments. And that's another really, really big pet peeve when you're pregnant is other people having disappointment. This video could be 20 minutes long for how annoying it is for other people to have disappointments and bad feelings about the sex of my baby I'm talking about people who got grandkids on top of grandkids of their own it's like you're done God said you're done you're you're going through menopause you're finished you should have no opinion about the sex of my baby <sighs> anyway I'm getting all flustered um so yeah I'm having a boy and I'm happy and that's all that matters um Dad is not a factor right now. He's trying to be, but not in a sensible way, not in a mature way. He wants to be there as to what's convenient for him, and it doesn't work like that because as a message to the men, the female is the one that's pregnant. So if you're trying to be around all up in the mix, trying to be at the appointments, you need to be catering to the mother. And I'm not a jerk. I'm not a bad person. And I've even gotten better since I've been pregnant. I've tried to be understanding. But my thing is, the pregnancy is about me. And fatherhood does not start when the baby's born. Fatherhood starts from the time that she tells you the baby's coming. So from the time that she tells you that that little stick came back and said, Oh, we having a baby? That's when fatherhood starts. Because that's when motherhood starts for her. I've had to go through the back pains, my hips hurt, my legs hurt, waking up 12, 4 in the morning with Charlie horses in my legs, having to get up early in the morning and still go to work because I really can't afford to not be at work. So for men to think that, um, that parenting starts when the baby gets here is asinine because it starts way earlier for the woman so you can't come in trying to do anything but cater to the mother because she's she's having to be a mother every day and men will never understand the changes that a woman's body has to go through when she's pregnant and I don't expect anyone to but you need to at least respect the fact that I'm the one that's going through the changes yes a lot of them physically you can't see but I can feel it all the time everything is a struggle Especially the further I get in. For the past three days, I've just woken up like somebody beat me up and I have no idea why. Just waking up sore. Had this pain the other day that felt like bruising on my right side. And I was like, I know I didn't hit my baby up against anything. So it's just crazy stuff that you wake up with. So message to the fathers is fatherhood does not start when the baby comes out. That's already almost a year in for the mom. We have to get up every day and change what we eat, change what we wear, change how we sleep, change who we interact with and talk to. It's a complete world change. Things that the man does not have to go through until after the baby's born. Maybe he'll have to change those things. At least maybe not for the first year because the baby don't want to be around nobody but mommy. So my thing is... Have respect for a woman that you know is having a baby and realize that motherhood starts from day one. 
motherhood does not start. That's why I am pro-life. I do not believe in abortion because motherhood starts from the time that that sperm fertilizes that egg and it becomes a little bitty baby. It is a long but short process to get to when the baby's actually coming out. But by that time, the mother, I feel ready already. Like, I know I still need to learn some things. Baby's got to get a little bit bigger. Cause he's probably a little too small to come out now. But I really do feel prepared to be a mother already. It's an instinct that kicked in the day that I found out. I went to Planned Parenthood. And they told me, oh, yeah, you're, you're about four weeks. And I flipped. I was like, oh, my God. And I started crying. And I was like, oh, I'm so happy. Because it wasn't planned. But it wasn't not planned, if that makes sense. There was nothing being done to prevent it. But it just wasn't planned. Especially because me and the father aren't together. We weren't together at the time. And I don't have any intentions of being together. And I know that everybody has their opinions about my life and what I should do based on what they've done in their life. But it's my life. And you can have your opinions but keep them to yourself because I don't need them. I'm good. I'm a great mother already. I've already made changes in my life to accommodate my baby. We're going to be good. We're going to be like this. And we're going to work it out. And... Like I said, just I think the biggest thing is respect. You should respect that motherhood starts from day one and that if you have read books and articles and watched the baby get pushed out and watch women's bodies go through changes, that's not even the half. So whatever you read in those books, whatever you see in those articles, times that by a hundred and then maybe you'll understand the dynamics of what women have to go through. Um, to be mothers, to be prepared to be mothers. And we don't have a choice. When we decide to keep the baby, we don't have a choice. Our body expands. We eat more. We eat less. We throw it up. We can't sleep. Those are changes that we have to go through. So if you're not helping that, then you're hurting that. And it's better to just stay away. If you don't know how to be an advocate for the pregnancy and for peace for the mom, then it's better to keep your distance. But this video has been 12 minutes. Like I said, I just wanted to give an update and um, I am. I'm so happy. Like, I don't even know how to explain it about my baby boy. Um, so I will try to keep you guys updated when I hit my third trimester, if I still feel like doing this. I'm already ready to take my maternity leave because I'm hot, I'm irritated, my legs hurt, I pee a lot, but those are all the perks that go with being a mommy and I'm so ready for my baby to be here. Like it's crazy. I see like my little baby cousin and I see babies out with their parents and I'm just like, I want my baby. I want him out already, but I kind of don't want to share him with the world so I kind of like him being inside, but... He doesn't have a name yet, but when I come down to all of that, I will probably let you guys know. But I just wanted to give an update, and this video has been 13 minutes, but I just wanted to swing in and check in and let everybody know what's going on. But yeah, that's all.